Cadence Claiborne, Vatborn daughter of Cammy, stood with Cookie, Grape Juice, and the Preserver, watching the large slime-coated cocoon in the reinforced lab. Cookie spun a bit and looked at the Preserver. That Infinigan proved useful. The Preserver looked with two of his three eyes focusing on Cookie. Yes, but they are still a plague. If it hadn't been caught, the entire station could have been wiped out by its mindless alterations. He turned, looking back at the experiment. They don't stop. They tinker away, playing with things they know nothing about until something horrible happens. It's in their very nature. Grape juice flexed her tri-fingers. Really? In their nature? Did you find the genes controlling how much creatures make mistakes? I'd like to have a copy of those sequences. It's a human expression, he retorted. Their genome lends them to curiosity, that coupled with lack of self-restraint, and they do things they shouldn't do, continuously. Cadence sighed. What does an Infinigan have to do with my brother? Is he part Infinigan now? The Preserver turned his head and focused on her. Not at all. There was an Infinigan who stumbled on a dead ship that contained our technology, lab kits in particular. He went on to try to make a human cat, but instead made a monstrosity. The Preserver turned and looked back at the cocoon containing Francis. But he did accidentally figure out a way to reconfigure living tissue without memory loss. Turns out there are numerous species on your origin world that do it often. Quite peculiar. Cadence looked over the tall patriarch of the Preservers. I'm not from Earth. I'm made. Oh, I am aware. Your genome is only minor tweaks made to it. For the most part, you are full human. Humans don't think so. Grape juice cantered next to her. You have tension caused by being born from a false womb. It is nothing wrong. Many species grow generations in the same manner. There is nothing unusual with you. Cadence looked at the purple-striped preserver. Okay, you got me interested. What earth creatures reconfigure their bodies without losing memories? Grape juice bobbed a bit. Your Lepidoptera proved to be the most suitable species to utilize. Their methods were well documented in Orbit's logs, and their genomes were heavily explored already by earth scientists. We used Acherontia with him. Grape juice flicked her fingers again. He said it looked cool. I like it. Cadence rolled her eyes, looking back at her brother. So, he's going to be a monster like whatever the Infinigan made? The Preserver lifted one of his three hands. We will find out momentarily. He's stirring. The watched as the cocoon twitched, a portion of it stretching out as he moved inside. Another portion pushed out, the fibers and skin becoming taut. A tear ripped across it, and a scaled arm and hand appeared from the wound in the cocoon. The hand reached and clawed, pulling at the film. With another pull, the cocoon popped open, and juices poured onto the floor. Francis Claiborne stepped out from his second womb, changed. The preserver touched the room's calm. Happy you are awake. How do you feel, Francis? The scaled creature looked at them with four insectile eyes, no mouth parts visible. It raised its hands and touched its face, feeling for its mouth. The preserver hit the button again to speak. On the table beside you, I had a Webian-type calm reworked for you. You should have some fingerlets under that plate on your chest. See if it fits. Francis walked over to the table and picked up the two parts of the device. He slipped the display lens in his top right eye and then started feeling on his chest. The plate muscles flexed, and it lifted. With a push, the typing device slid into the muscular pouch underneath. He then lowered his taut arms and stayed still for a moment. The four in the room waited. The speakers in the room then spoke with a mechanical voice. It is intuitive. Thank you. The preserver bobbed. How do you feel? Any residual pains? No. I feel new. My body feels rested. Strong. Good. We will have to run some tolerance tests and take samples to make sure your DNA structures are holding. We don't want any decay cascades. You okay with that? Yes, Francis said. I, that makes sense. I agree to that. Confused, yet with clarity.
Cadence looked at the preserver with concern. The preserver took note and spoke up again. Confused on what? So far you are appearing as a success. The creature in the lab walked slowly around the room, touching objects. So much input. I can smell the room. He ran his fingers over a metal table with glass test tubes on it. So many things. I know what they are, but they are all new to me. Having to relearn, Grape Juice leaned over to Cadence and whispered to her. I researched a lot about moths. They have exceptional chemical receptors. We put in as many sensor platforms as we could squeeze into him, without causing dysfunction. I bet it's amazing. Cadence moved the preserver away from the calm and spoke into it. Brother, it's Cadence. Are you all right? He turned and looked at the mirrored glass. Yes, just slightly disoriented. It's like looking into a bright light, but with all your senses. I can feel the air. Taste it. I see colors I have no words for. It is new, but I will process it. I'm here to help. What can I do? He stared into the mirror with his four alien eyes. Give me time. Josiah and Callie sat in the new Vitalian Hotel, located near the new sprawling downtown. The lobby they were enjoying drinks in overlooked a small body of water. Slithering creatures roiled around, churning the water. Small Vitalian children were tossing in fuzzy lumps of animal, causing the creatures to leap out of the water and fight for the morsels. Callie shook her head. This place still creeps me out. So violent. Josiah laughed. Your pet world creeps you out? And you want to go explore a new one? She smiled at him. I didn't really get out into it. I'm better at watching from safety. Well, that's no way to live. This next one, I'm going to get out there with you. We're going to walk that world together. If it's like this one, we won't make it five feet. Josiah reached over and touched her hand. I got some surprises ordered. You're going to like them. Oh, surprises. Do tell. He shook his head. Can't. He smiled for a while, looking into her eyes. Change of subject. How many did you get for the team? I got quite a few hired. I got one of Spitz Little's daughters, Nash Smile. She's proficient in beacon and rift tech. I think that would be an asset. She could help us rig up an AI, I think. Callie started counting on her fingers. I got a tar, paraffin, a group of stickians led by one called Twelve Toe. She smiled at Josiah. Guess how many toes he has. Josiah stared at her. She looked back at her fingers. Stubborn and Slayer were eager to get off the station. They want to run around, so I offered them a spot on the expedition. Grape Juice said she'd come, and I hired a group of four air from the Twain Hospital staff. They said they needed field work or something. She looked at him. So, what about these two we are meeting here? Who are they? Well, Cadence is the woman who busted me out of that prison ship. I owe her my freedom. She's pretty tough, and I figured she would be an asset. Some scribbler descendants of a tribe I worked with some on the Brumis, a couple Gallic who wanted to come. Oh, and Cadence's brother texted, saying he wanted to come along. Josiah laughed. He wanted to do some field trials as well. Callie laughed. Sounds like he can run with the air, keep them safe. Dunno. If he's anything like Cadence, well, we won't have to worry about him. Just as they had mentioned them, Cadence walked in through the front doors. Josiah stood up having seen her and waved. He looked down at Callie. There she is. He looked back up at her and saw the giant bluish-green scaled humanoid standing beside her. Um... Callie stood up, touching Josiah's arm. What is that thing? That a curator or something? Cadence and her brother walked over. She held her hand out and was greeted with a shake from Josiah. Hello again. Thank you for this mission. We could use the funds. Josiah looked at the giant standing next to her. And who is this? Cadence patted her brother on the side. This is my brother, Rockborn. He's a little different, but you'll be glad to have him with us. He is a jack of all trades. Callie looked him over. Well, welcome to the team. 
We have a ship over at the port. You two ever worked on a Gree vessel before? Cadence looked up at her brother, and then back at Callie. We are aware of them. It should be nothing too jarring. Callie laughed. You say that, but they tend to listen in a lot. Can't keep secrets while in one. Just a forewarning. Don't say anything you don't want gossiped about. Rockborn looked down at his sister. Cadence nodded. He wants the files about the world in question. He has done some field tests here, and is wondering if the life forms on this Gallic world are comparable. Callie looked at Josiah for a moment, then back at the two siblings. We don't know yet. We have a few dozen myths, some snaps from flybys and its location. Could be anything there. Cadence nodded. He is also wondering if you will have any bigoted crew. We are not fond of strongly opinionated peoples, Callie thought for a moment. Well, the Stickians are all around assholes. They judge quite a bit. That going to be a problem? Cadence shook her head. No, that is in their species file. Slavers, warlike, overtly sexual, and judgmental. We are aware, and it shouldn't be an issue. Rockborn communicated to his sister again. Cadence nodded. He wants to know if we can kill any if they do become a problem. Callie glared at her. Don't kill any of our crew. Figure out ways to work with them, please. Rockborn nodded, as did Cadence. She smiled at Callie. We agree to that. When do we depart? Callie looked around. Well, I'm waiting on a friend of mine still. She looked at Josiah. Grape juice should be here by now. Cadence smiled. She was in her lab still readying her things. She laughed. I did not put it together. She was readying for a trip and wouldn't discuss it with us. Her brother tapped her on the shoulder. Cadence chuckled. She'll be surprised to see us on board. This will be fun. Josiah looked around at the group. Well, text her. Get her to meet us there then and I'll go pack up our room. Callie smiled at him. All right, I'll take them over to the ship. He winked. See you in a bit. He, uh, Enid Covington, woke up in her room. With a yawn, she stretched and extended her feet to the floor. Still in a daze, she walked over to the single hanger in the closet and pulled on her orange robe. She stepped out into the brightly lit hallway and started walking. She passed a man going in the opposite direction, Frank Lucian. She remembered him, a cook from the Copernicus. She smiled and he gave a curt nod as he walked back to his room. She sighed, her hand touching the empty spot on her hip where her fragger used to be. Even though the robe completely covered her, except for her ankles, she felt naked. Enid continued walking even though she had nowhere to go. She walked down the halls, leading toward the housing quarters of her captors. Most of her fellow humans from the United World stayed clear, but she was bored and didn't really realize or care where she meandered. She stepped through a door that opened for her and into a large greenhouse. The translucent dome above let in starlight, and she stopped to look into the void. Then her eyes wandered across the greenery in the room, and the bright yellow lights illuminating them. She stepped through the plants, her hand tracing along the leaves. Enid stopped as she crossed a pathway. A crab-like three-legged Zeno was standing across from her, handling some tomatoes. One of its eyes shifted and focused on her. The brown and gray creature touched a device on its chest and began speaking in human common. Hello, human female. Were you wanting fresh produce? She shook her head. No, no, I just took a wrong turn. She started backing up to leave. The creature walked closer to her, its three legs causing it to spin as it did. I am curious human. How are you adjusting to the facility? She stopped and looked up at the creature. This prison? Yeah, loving it. You're doing a great job. The preserver looked over her. Your face flushed and the tone of your voice changed. You are attempting to hide anger. She stood straighter, looking into its eyes. Yes. You've studied us, then? Learning what you can from your subjects? The Xeno focused all its eyes on her, lowering itself to her height. I am Twain Born from the last season. I've been around several of your species, and also the subspecies of Tower. They are quite similar. 
I have not committed to any intensive studies of your people. My field of research has been a focus on botanical organisms. She looked over the creature. What are you? I am the designated preserver for this facility. I'm overseeing the crops on this world. She sneered. No, I mean what are you? You look like a crab someone broke a leg off. She laughed. Bet the meat was tasty and damn the size of your legs. I bet there's bunches. The preserver bobbed in place. Ah, yes. Humans joke about us being a potential delicacy. If you do have actual inquiry about my species, we call ourselves preservers. We have a natural aptitude for biology sciences. He leaned his body closer to her, inspecting her with his multifaceted eyes. You appear healthy. That is good. I've been hoping the provided food could sustain your populace. Yeah, I'm fit as a fiddle. She leaned away from him. So, when are you letting my people out of this prison? He turned back to the plant, picking off a spotted leaf. The Senate has nominated this facility a temporary encampment. You and the Gallic are not prisoners. If we aren't prisoners, then we can leave? You going to let me go, Crabman? He looked at her with one eye over his shoulder. When you find a purpose suitable for yourself, we will gladly let you go. But as of now, you are still deemed a threat. Enid leaned on one of the large rectangular planters. Well, I am a threat. You aren't scared? She stared him down. The male provider of DNA for myself attempted to eat me upon my hatching. I have never felt such fear. I'm far larger now, and you are nowhere near the size discrepancy as I was faced with my father attempting to digest me. No, human female, you are not scary. She pulled a stake that was pinning a bit of twine into the soil and charged the preserver. Fuck you, Zeno! She lunged at him. He spun on his feet, tripped her, and upon her hitting the ground, he placed a foot on the back of her head. Your blood flushes abruptly before your muscles move. Your attack was easily seen human. You should practice containing your emotions better. If you remain calmer, you will be harder to predict. He lifted his foot, and Enid crawled away, staring at him. You going to call security? He turned back and pulled off several red cherry tomatoes. Why? Do you need assistance? She started getting back up to her feet, dusting the gravel and dirt from her robe. She looked over at him as he notated the tomatoes he pulled. You said before, if we have a suitable purpose, we can leave here. What does that mean? He paused and looked over at her. We all need a purpose, something to do. What is yours? What is mine? I was a security officer aboard one of the finest oblivion carriers in the human fleet. What's yours? He bobbed slightly. I am head botanical specialist here. I have mentioned this. The clouder is paying me well to make sure your people are fed and oxygenated. My purpose is to accrue currency so as to increase my specimen vault and to fund my building of a zoo on this planetoid. He turned back to his documentation display. Then... When I have my zoo stocked and specimens displayed, I will host a season, and many females will come and lay their eggs for me. She blinked a couple times. You're working here so you can get some ladies. Fucking men. No. My people do not copulate as yours do, and I do not intend to facilitate any rival males coming if I do not have to. This facility is not large enough to host competitions. He stopped the data entry, focusing again on her. What is it you want for your future purpose, human female? I am truthfully inquiring. She looked at him for a moment. Well, I liked being in security. I liked my guns, but if I were to get them back, I'd still be seen as a threat, so... The preserver flicked his fingers, thinking, No, I do not think a single human with weaponry is a threat. You could not do much in terms of harming the clouder. Your ships, fully staffed, were a threat. Alone, you are not. He touched his display again and pulled up a different file. Enid Covington. Yes. I will put in that you are interested in security details. This will help. Thank you for sharing, human female. You don't think a human with a gun is a threat? No. 
The clouder is made up of numerous species on over a dozen worlds. One human could not harm that. She laughed. Humans are stronger than you think. You'd be surprised. Humans are strong, yes. A human is not. You are frail, easily injured, operating on faulty sensory organs and quite moody. He lowered himself so as to be eye to eye to eye with her. Most of your kind needs others to be of any use. A real human threat is an anomaly. For a botanist, you seem to know quite a bit about humans. He stood back up to his full height. I have spent a significant time with one of your anomalies. He went back to pulling fruit. Did that person know how to control his emotions, not reveal his blood? You learned that stuff hanging out with us? You a weirdo? Dissecting people? No. I am enjoy plants. They are my primary focus. I have several potential mates already inquiring about my collection. It is quite sizable. He looked at her with one of his eyes. I grew up in the farms on Twain. One of your kind saved my siblings and I from eating each other. He enjoyed working with plants as I now do. We spent many cycles planting corn, tobacco, the forebears of these very tomatoes. He's a great warrior, fought in the first Gallic encounters. I learned much of humanity from him. A fighter, eh? Was he able to get a hit on you? Yes. He was eager to learn. I have learned from my inquiries with the orbit that he would roughhouse with us. At first we were confused, thinking he was trying to eat us. But it was your species' fraternal instincts of roughhousing. He taught us how to fight with a human from our youth, and in so doing he learned how to avoid us hitting him. It's quite an interesting adaptation to increase the survivability of your young. She laughed. A human raised you, that's smart. Sounds like a weirdo bonding with space crabs. She shivered. Gross. As I said, he is an anomaly. He was also here alone for quite some time and had to learn to be among other species. I understand why my biological DNA donator bonded to him. Shit. You're talking about Sam, aren't you? He bobbed. Of course. My apologies, I did not make that evident. She sat back down on the ground, leaning on a large pot with okra growing in it. He was just stranded out here, wasn't he? Yes. His crew had died. From my research, not many of your species could survive the mental isolation as he did. Yeah, an anomaly. I get it. Sounds like he's kind of a badass. All of this mess out here is because of him. That's crazy. The clouder is the opposite of a mess. It is quite an accomplishment. She laughed. Yeah, a bunch of aliens getting together and cobbling together a space station. Doesn't sound messy at all. You know, they gave us copies of your accord. It's just a mash of human laws. It's funny you all bought it and are just rolling with it. My people, preservers, carve out niches on worlds. We are used to having to fight for life space. Most of the universe is death or dealing with hostile creatures. Your Sam and your human laws arriving here has caused a cascade of community. It is an accomplishment. You are right, there are messes. But we have custodians now that clean up those. I do not think I would have survived if not for the human Sam. Actually, I know I would not have. I'm not as strong as my brothers. I would have been eaten. He made a fist with his three hands. Yes, they would have eaten me. Are people really that different? Didn't he buy the station from another race? I mean, he's not the first to make a station out here. The preserver knelt down and approached her again. Humans are not that different as you have proven. You are just as hostile and antagonistic as any other species. The Sam, though, he is different. You should be more like Sam. He stood back up and walked around the planter and started harvesting okra pods. She stood up and looked at the creature. Enid turned, pocketed the stake, and walked toward the door. The preserver shouted with his chest device. Good luck, human female. I will send off your purpose. I hope you find a place to habitate. Enid raised her hand limply and went back to meandering. Dam stood on the grand bridge of the Veritasium, orbiting the prison world of the Kawaru system. He watched the massive hollow display as it rendered the ships descending down to the rocky ice world. He looked over at the newly rendered AI. Veritas, give me vitals on the two facilities. Yes, sir. 
Gallic inhabitants are irritated still, but neurosis levels are decreasing. The Overwatcher parry has just facilitated the distribution of 400 head of cattle. The Gallic are currently feeding and replenishing their bodies. Filthy creatures. Sometimes I wish we could just eradicate the lot of them. Agreed, sir. They are a potential risk over the entirety of the clouder. The golden AI walked its holographic human form across the bridge and stood shoulder to shoulder with Dam. Your endeavors are proving fruitful. The ship will be able to stand toe to toe with any known human vessel that may arrive in the rim. Several more, and we will be the best armed organization known to exist. Dam looked over the asexual golden hologram, better armed than the rogue mothers. He walked over to the hollow display and looked over the system. What about whatever the Arlong is? Think we are a match for it? Both are unknown, sir. Dam looked up and at the crew manning their consoles. Members of each of the founding species were present. Dam watched the Webian in its tube, docked to its terminal, running numbers in economic simulations. Two obelisks were on a call with an ocean grower back on Twain, making plans for greenhouses on the planetoid below. Dam looked back at Veritas. I think we need more. Even with giant ships, a small fleet of planet crackers could slip the line and wreak havoc on home worlds. That is unacceptable. The AI touched the hologram and zoomed in on Kawaru Prime. The old prison is being reconfigured into orbital defenses. Gree fleets are growing, and patrolling this system in the two nearest. More is being made, other cultures are assisting. You do not have to share these worries alone, sir. Dam took a long breath and strode toward the door. He let it slide open and exited into his quarters. He sat down at his desk. Veritas, connect me to my wife. The desk shimmered, and a ringing nose came through on the speakers. A moment later, shineless, and a small child appeared in holographic rendering, full color. Dam smiled at her. Hello, wife. Hello, husband, she replied. How is the valley? Micah came to visit. Asterion is still on Twain. He had to tend to the zoo. The preserver has yet to make it back to the station. Shineless bounced a bit. Oh, they're thinking of having a wedding, like a big one. She says we're invited and we'll send an invite when they get the details haggled out. That is good news. People finding their lives and making it. I love it. We're going to need a dress for Caroline. She's going to be big enough to be the flower girl. I'll have to help her a bit, but she can walk the aisle for them. Sounds beautiful. We can make a venue the next valley over. I bet there will be more weddings to follow. Shineless nodded. I watched an old flat movie like that last week. If we make the valley, the people will get married. She laughed and then stared at him for a moment. You're king of a world. I think we should get married. He stared back at her. Should we build a castle too? Outfit a legion of scribblers to be our royal guard? You already have a legion of scribblers. Hell, everyone does. I heard Spitzlittle outfitted a legion of Infinigan. Get one of those and I'd be impressed. All right. Maybe get some of your family to suit up. Move out? My mama would love a place, she said. We could grow some crystal mountains for them. Maybe ask Curator to design something to generate a localized atmosphere for them. I bet we could get a legion to come on their own. She bounced the child on her knee, causing it to coo a bit. You're still worrying too much. I can see it. I have to worry. No one else is. Everyone is out playing space or zoo tycoon out here. If I don't worry, we're going to be caught off guard and wiped out. Spitzlittle has been worrying and putting it to good use. You're not alone. We're not alone. We need more organization, he said. We need better chain of command, trained leaders, efficiency. He leaned back in his chair, rubbing his forehead. We need people. I paid the Fuimos to increase reproduction just to fill spots on this ship. They're good pilots, but they aren't warriors. If we got boarded, we would be shredded. The clouder needs bodies. Well, we just got three ships full of humans. Put them to work. He shook his head. They're enemy combatants, dear. 
they'd be likely to kill the already existing multi-species crew. I can only imagine what they will do when they see our daughter walking as a flower girl in a transgenic wedding. These people are too full of hate to be of any use. My parents thought Sam was like that at first. Mama even attacked him. Turns out we were just as misinformed about him as we thought he was of us. Damn sighed. You're saying I should try and make peace with them? Think the olive branch technique will work? He laughed. It's generational hate. Give them any kind of leverage and you will get a mutiny wherever we put them. She pulled a brush into frame and started brushing Caroline's hair. Then separate them. There are thousands and millions of ships darting around the rim. Get some of the people jobs on those. Maybe some exposure to other cultures will help the situation. Dam tapped his fingers on the desk. That's actually a good idea. The Craddock fleet is spread out, keeping the lanes safe. They are more than capable of handling a human on board their ships. Yeah, that might work. Every Craddock freed up is a potential soldier. I love you, wife. I love you too, husband. Be safe out there. Safe as the void can be. Perry had finished herding the herbivores into the Gallic enclosure and was walking his three different bodies down the ribbed hallway to his quarters. He entered his tiered aviary and climbed up the wall to his sleeping ledge. The three bodies scampered and curled together, the threads tightening them together. Like a fitted puzzle, the three bodies layered on top of one another, and with one free appendage he reached up and touched the comm. The horde is fed for now. Dam looked in from the comm display. Good. There any hope any of them will join the cause? There is always hope. I think they will eventually see how beneficial it could be. Eventually one will take the chance and sign up with the Clouder. We have already seen great progress with the holdouts from Kaworu Prime. Several have already passed courses and are working at the casino. Perry switched mouths to ease in verbal communication. I did not think any of that batch would be sympathetic enough to be around other species. They have proved me wrong. Dam looked at Parry's central body, a deceased human pulled from the debris orbiting the planet. You're wearing a human. That is a legal offense, you know this. It is also legally valid. Detritus found where there are no surviving crew is allowed to be salvaged. The Infinigan use it quite often. Dam shook his head. Yeah. There are surviving crew and the ship is not detritus. Those carriers are still in use and are crewed. You need to make that body disappear. Well, the body is detritus, and it is uncrewed. I can use it. No, you can't. You're going to cause an incident if you're seen with that on. I need you to dispose of it before anyone sees. Do you understand? Perry shifted his bunched-up bodies. Sapient corpses are in very short supply here. We're going to need fresh ones. Without them, we're going to lose progress. They'll get wilder without the higher brain functions. Damn thought it over for a bit. All right. I'll work on something. Just get out of that one, you understand? All right. I will need a new one by next cycle, then. <laughs>